for as long as humans have walked the earth, we have tried to make sense of our surroundings. While many ancient ways of observing and experimenting with nature could be thought of as science, the 16th century saw an explosion of tools and methods that led to breakthroughs in our understanding of the world. This period is called the Scientific Revolution, and it changed everything. As we came to a clearer understanding of our physical surroundings, we grew into the realization that questions about the world should be answered by studies of the world rather than with our assumptions or convictions. Since then, science has developed into such an effective tool for answering questions and solving problems, it's led some to argue that we no longer have a need for faith, or even that faith is a vice and not a virtue. So do we need faith? Do we need religion? Or has science replaced these ways of knowing? These questions are leading us to the next scientific revolution. Not an expansion of science, although scientific understanding will continue to grow, but the realization that humans need science and faith to understand the universe and ourselves, and that integrating science with faith will produce more than the sum of their parts. To understand this prediction, let's revisit the emergence of modern science itself. Nicholas Copernicus deserves recognition for helping christen science when he proposed a heliocentric or sun-centered model for our solar system. It's less well known that while he got the general idea correct, many aspects of his proposal were not entirely accurate. He rightly thought that the planets move around the sun, but his calculations of their orbits were consistently off. We now know why. He believed that the orbits would be perfect circles, an assumption tied not to science, but theological beliefs about what type of creation a perfect God would produce. This conviction didn't come from the Bible, but most likely emerged from the broad influence of Plato and Aristotle, who believed that a perfect God would create a flawless universe, and they associated the symmetry of circles with divine perfection. Copernicus knew his calculations were off, but rather than consider non-circular orbits, he made modifications including the addition of epicycles into each trip around the sun. It wasn't until Johannes Kepler proposed elliptical orbits that we were able to more accurately predict the location of the planets and eventually confirm the heliocentric model. Now, This conceptual blemish aside, Copernicus remains one of the esteemed founders of modern science. After all, we have the Copernican revolution to thank for refining our understanding of the solar system structure and for revealing to the world the power of empirical science. Copernicus's theology-derived error on the planetary orbits is one of many examples of why science now exists as a value-free endeavor. We recognize that assumptions about the way the world ought to be could confuse our analysis of how it is. This stubborn insistence on rooting out bias strengthens our confidence in its conclusions, but it limits the questions it can answer. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we used science to develop vaccines and determine the effectiveness of masks and measure the physical distance necessary to decrease the risk of transmission. In this way, science can produce knowledge. It can pull the world apart and explain how it works. But it can't tell us whether those discovered functions are good or bad or how we should use that knowledge to make the world a better place. Science can't decide who should be first in line for the vaccine, who should get a ventilator or therapeutic medicine if we run low, or which businesses should remain open and which should not. Those determinations and others like them are dependent on ethics and values, which stem from our beliefs about good and evil, right and wrong, meaning and purpose. And that is where religious faith comes in. The morals we use to determine how to apply scientific knowledge will always be based in a system of beliefs. In Christianity, the standards for right and wrong come from God's definition of good and evil, rather than defining those terms for ourselves. Christianity can give purpose and meaning to what science reduces to mere forces and particles. Science can explain the cause of death, but not why it's wrong to kill. Science can tell us that humans search for purpose, but not what our purpose is. 
among the greatest perennial wisdom humans have ever produced, that beauty has meaning, that freedom is better than oppression, that love is better than hate. None of these are conclusions from science. They're what we believe. They're what the New Testament author of Hebrews calls confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. They are matters of faith. So science without faith produces knowledge without direction. A faith without science yields purpose without tools. The first scientific revolution showed us that objective science is the best way to create knowledge about the contents, mechanisms, and history of our physical surroundings. But the next scientific revolution will likely be the acceptance that we need more than science to create a just, equitable, and loving world. Science didn't eliminate the need for faith. We need to integrate science with Christian faith to produce a fuller knowledge of God, of our surroundings, and of ourselves. Thanks for watching. At Disciple Science, we are here to help you connect with God through God's creation. And part of that is using science and faith to get a fuller picture of who we are and who God is. We're a nonprofit. We're based here in St. Paul, Minnesota, and everything we make is free because of your generous support. If you want to help us make more of these videos, we would greatly appreciate your donations. You can give by visiting our website at disciplescience.com. One-time donations are great. We really appreciate those of you who are willing to give us five, 10, $15 a month. Again, you can do it all at disciplescience.com.